Hello everyone, I'm Hazy and this is my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Today I am starting the Ultimate Decade Challenge by Morbid Gamer. So I'm really excited to revive my channel and start recording again. I have worked out most of the kinks when it comes to recording frame rates and I'm really excited because I love storytelling and that's something I really miss. Sharing my Sims stories um, just is something I love. So we're going to get into it. Let me tell you tell you how we're going to play. So excuse the brightness from the uh, screen while it's on my face, but um, we're doing the Morbid's Ultimate Decade Challenge from the year 1300 to 2020. Let me just shrink myself. So if you go to her Tumblr page, you will have a link to this, and I just copied it to my Dropbox. It is 16 pages of rules. Now, I will say this is inspired by history, European history. I treat my Sims game like its own universe. It is not Earth. It is not Europe. It is not our timeline. There are things like spellcasters, mermaids, aliens, uh, werewolves, vampires. So I honor that because it is the game, and this is like a $300 game. I love all the quirkiness and all the fun pieces of the sims so i will not be calling it uh england or europe i will say our kingdom or our land um things like that our country so just know that i also want to give out a trigger warning this challenge my youtube videos in general are not recommended for anyone who is under the age of 18 um, just because it is mature content. So trigger warning for this um, series, there is going to be a lot of death. We are playing through wars, pandemic, tra tragic events, and Sims will be dying from the newborn stage, infants, children, toddlers. Um, I said that backwards, but you get what I'm saying, teens, adults, and elders. So if that is something that bothers you uh, with storytelling, I do not recommend this challenge for you, but I will come up with some cozy challenges in the future. Um, my depiction of this challenge does not in any way or allow or support racism, homophobia, incest, slavery, genocide, sexism, or colonization. Um, we're just playing through history. We are doing, it's kind of like D&D &D where you roll a dice to see if things happen, if a chance occurs. I also, so she has her regular rules and then she has rules that you can add. And then she has, um, she says, play how you want. You can, you know, take out what you want. I'm basically laying the groundwork. Um, 90% I will be following her rules, but I also have my own. So I will take you guys into that. So that's why I'm going to call it the Extreme Ultimate Decade Challenge by Hazy uh, Dreamer. Uh, or Hazy Simmer, sorry. My channel used to be Hazy Dreamer. So let's get into it. Um, this is the 1300s. This is where we're going to start in our Sim universe. In our kingdom, it is 1300s and it's the Middle Ages. Around the 1300s centuries, uh, the century of prosperity and growth in our kingdom has come to a halt. A series of famines and plagues, including the Great Famine of 1315 to 1317 and the Black Death, reduces the population to half of what it had been before all these calamities. Along with depopulization came social unrest and warfare. So we have our rules and I'll kind of just be talking through that as we play because I don't want to bore you guys with the reading the whole document. Although I find it interesting, I will not be, um, you know, I feel like you can just look up how to play this. She has a video where she explains it in depth. So if it's something you're interested in, you could do that. So I saved all her files to my Dropbox and I will show you guys in real time how I'm doing my spreadsheets just for today. I already have this spreadsheet. Um, hang on a second, we wanna view the whole thing. We already have this spreadsheet. Let me get you guys out of my way, there we go. Yeah, so we already have the spreadsheet set up for um, me. So Hazy Simmers, uh, ulti I'm gonna do Extreme Ultimate Decade Challenge. Oh, I forgot I have caps on. Extreme Ultimate Decade Challenge. So this is where we're gonna keep up with the days and the years. One year is four Sims days. I do not play like that normally. I normally actually uh, play a week or two weeks is a sim year, so this is, or a season. Sort of like how in Game of Thrones they're like, oh, my summer child, like he was, you know, in summer his whole life. I kind of treat the Sims universe like that Game of Thrones universe where seasons, you don't have to experience all four seasons in a year, but um, I never play as four days as a Sim year. So that's kind of crazy. So the spreadsheet, will keep up with it. You start on a Sunday and that's your day one of year 1300. And then you will mark who gets aged up. 
I already started in the year 1265 as some pregame because I wanted to have the, uh, so you get to start with three Sims um, as your heirs. Essentially, the oldest is the heir, and then you have the other two as side households. Because the risk of death in this game and this challenge due to chances, you want to make sure you can always have an heir to go to from your original founding family. So I have John Alder. He is the Gen Zero of the founding family. He married Danielle Sterling. They had five children, Rowan, their daughter, did die and the mother died in childbirth. So as I said, you know, trigger warning, things will be happening in game. This is just what happened in my own time. If you're going to look at the chart with me, um, their oldest son, Jacob, who is highlighted, he is their heir. That is also why he is at the bottom because he is already engaged and he will be starting his family soon. Um, so I already went ahead and prepped my character sheets for that. Um, I have his second son, Jedediah Rowan, who passed away. That was, um, Connor and Frederick and Rowan were triplets, and Danielle passed away giving birth to Rowan. So Connor and Frederick are left. Um, I don't know if they're still, I assume they're still triplets just because one is dead. So if you hear me say triplets or twins, I'm talking about Connor and Frederick. Um, I'm going to do really good not to get confused by names. Names always confuse me in real life, so this is going to be a treat. Um, yeah, so we already have them. That is our Gen Zero and our three plus an extra. Um, side households in our main household. So Abraham Gilmore and Kathleen Gilbert, they are both Gil, Gilmore, Gil, Gilbert. Their families are um, Fisher. They're, they're a super poor peasant family that um, live in a little Fisher hut. And um, they have, yeah, so that's why their names start with Gil. Um, as well as John Alder, he is, he is a farmer as well as he was granted land um, in the woods. So that's why his last name is Alder. Danielle Sterling comes from a, she, she is like the sixth daughter of a blacksmith. So that's why her last name is Sterling. So anyways, I just kind of like to give a little bit of background. So Abraham married Kathleen and they had Halia, Tamara, Pascal, and Cormac, uh, Cormac, sorry. Um, Kathleen died of a heart attack. And then two years later, Cormac died of freezing to death. So he was a toddler when he passed away. Um, so right now they have three living children, Halia, Tamara, and Pascal. Abraham's only male son is Pascal, but we will not be following him. I just have him on here because he is related to Halia, um, cause Halia is Marion. She is engaged to Jacob. Um, Abraham and John struck up a deal to marry his two, Abraham's two daughters to John and, um, for just for a good bit of, um, growth for their families um, because John was looking after his wife died in childbirth. He was looking for women who come from a strong line of successful births and um, no childbirth deaths. So Kathleen died of a heart attack, not from childbirth, and she had four living children. So John found that Halia and Tamar Tamara were very good candidates for her, his sons. So Jacob is the heir. He is engaged to Halia and um, Tamar, um, Jedediah, their second born son from John is engaged to Tamara and they will be one of our side households. So we have Jedediah in here and his partner will be Tamara Gilmore. And we get to, they get unlimited kid tries, but after that we will keep track of their line and they will only get a certain amount of kid tries, but the original ones get more. Um, Connor is the third son, as you saw right here, and he will also be one of our side households, but Frederick will not unless Connor passes away. Um, so this is what's going to make my challenge extreme. I'm trying really hard to get through this so we can get into gameplay today because I would like to take us to the weddings and get started on our Gen 1s making it airs for Gen 2. Um, so random acts of life. That is what's making my my ultimate decade challenge extreme. I have come up with six so far, but I am looking to do more random acts in life. So my first one is like find a wild animal, find livestock, things that you can have in the game, animals, right? Uh, you're going to roll a D20 if you get an even number on an even year. So in the year 3000, we're going to start it in 3002, uh, thir not 3000, the year 1302. We're not going to start it in year 1300, but 1302, 4, 6, 8, 10, we get to roll the dice, see if we found, um, 
even numbers below 16 means we found a wild animal and then we roll a die again based on the animals in the game. So if there is 12 animals in the game, we're going to roll um, a d12 and things like that and then it'll tell us which one we get. So I'll just list, list them in alphabetical order or in order of game release. So like get cats and dogs first. Um, I don't think we would get a hamster, but we might decide how that goes. Um, rabbits, birds, uh, fish, cow, and then, you know, I would just roll to see what animal they found, um, like horses. So if they got, if we have 12 animals and we rolled and we got a number below 16, so let's say we got 12, that means we did find an animal, and we roll another 12, that means we found a horse, and that gets to be added to the family. Um, another random act of act in life is kidnapping. So in the third year of each new decade, so the first one will be 1303, and then the next one will be 13 years later. So every 13 years, um, you're going to, I'm going to roll a dice to see if someone in the main household gets kidnapped, um, which is super spooky, but I just really like that chance of gameplay. Um, I also have it where they, on every solstice in the holiday system, they can earn a chance to get money or an item they need. If they're in a betrothal, betroth, betrothal from um, the main household to um, an existing household, and it's a female to male, and the female comes from the main household, we will roll to see if her husband cheats on her because it's an arranged marriage, and that did happen. Um, as well as if you have over five kids in the main household, I'm going to roll the dice when they are peasants. If they cannot afford to feed their kids, they're going to roll the dice to see if they send their kid to like be a servant in another household, go be a fisherman, um, be a stable hand somewhere, be in a black black princess blacksmith apprentice. Oh my goodness, I just invented a new word. So yeah, so I have those little random acts to add into the game to make it really fun. We are going to use the D20 Roller app from the uh, Google search, and that's about it. So here we are in game, and I'm not blown out anymore. I'm trying to decide where you guys would want to see me. We'll do it right here for now because I'm having a notification glitch, so that way you guys don't see it as much. But here we are on the Alder Farm. Um, I do have view distance off just because it'll be smoother for gameplay. But yeah, so John Alder, our Gen Zero, was given this forested land. As you can tell, they only cleared out some of it. There is like some trees down in the back here. He was given this forested land by their local baron to farm. Um, he just fell into good favor with the baron. That's kind of why they're in a log cabin. Um, I know this is probably not accurate for the European-centric time zone. I mean, a uh, history, but that is this is our history. This is the story I am telling. So this is the main house, and then this is the sleeping quarters for the teens, the laundry area, and they do have a little tiny bathroom with basic amenities because this is The Sims, and I do not. I watched a few gameplays where they had to go to a bathhouse, and I just find honestly found it would be annoying because your Sims would be uncomfortable all the time. It'd be one thing if you could make your Sims not uncomfortable from being filthy and it just be a mood blip maybe other people were uncomfortable around them but unfortunately your sim is uncomfortable and I do not want to deal with my sims not wanting to do anything so the year is 1289 uh, or 1299 we are two days away from the new year so I'm going to go ahead and get us started and I'm going to show you guys um, our people here I definitely am regretting putting hills in the house or on the land so yeah, here is Connor. He will be our third household. I do not know what this Sims 4 update is, but it's driving me insane. Um, yeah, so here is Connor. We're zooming in to see Connor. Okay, never mind. Yeah, um, I'm definitely going to be revamping their home after this because I do not enjoy the zooming and the way my camera is working uh, with hills. But yeah, so this is Connor. He is going to be one of our side households uh, once he ages up. And right now he's really doing nothing. So, oh, he's going to go be mischievous, I think. What is he? He's going to yell at Halia. So Halia is here. Technically, she is not supposed to be. They haven't gotten married yet, but I was just kind of um, getting things going. So I will show you where her she is from and her family is from in a little bit. But, yeah, they're going to be – he's yelling at her. I don't really know why. He's calling her a llama, I guess. Oh, the drama. Um, but, yeah, so when it – I'll take you to her family's house once it gets a little bit um, later in the day. So this is our heir over here. This is 
so sorry. I really should not have built hills. This is Jacob Alder. He is talking to his little brother, Connor, just about life and responsibility. This is their main hut over here. They just have like a little bucket for water, some laundry baskets, a little tiny brick stove. Um, this is the yield cookbook mod so we can make um, things where we have to make ingredients. Right now they have some salted meat that they can pick at. Um, oh, they sh well, so this is the Sims. Sims are going to kiss. It's A-OK -okay with me. Um, I do know this time period was more modest, but they are engaged and they are going to get married in the next two days. So we're just going to ignore that. Um, this is our... Jedediah, he is going to be one of our house, second households. So this is everybody who's going to be uh, one of our main households and side households. But yeah, so Jedediah is cooking. I've never seen him do that before, but that's nice. And yeah, so that's where we are. And if it's dark, that's just because, you know, all they would have had back then is candles. So now that it's 6 a.m., I am going to bring um, Halia over to visit her family so we can meet her. Uh, meet them. So we're going to go meet her family. So I will say this may come off a little awkward with me recording. I actually did record my very first episode last night and um, my lag was just really bad in game and I realized I had to adjust OBS settings. So I decided to re-record it. So um, things are going to change. I'm actually really excited because the dice rolls are going to be different every time. So there's certain characters who died who may not die. There's characters who lived who may not live. Um, yeah. So we are at the Gilmore uh, Fisher Hut. Their house is made of mud and straw. It is very small. This is the main house. And then this was the second house, but it's larger. So it became the main house. So right now this is where the siblings stay. And then this is the kitchen and the main bedroom. They have a small garden and a wild garden. And here is the grave of her mother and her brother Cormac. So Halia's mother was a local herbalist. As you can see, she grew up out in the woods and that was just, you know, there's herbs and all that kind of uh, botanical things at their fingertips. So her mother was really good with like healing remedies and just remedies in general. She was not a midwife. She was not a witch doctor or anything. She was just someone who was really good at making um, homemade remedies and ailments. So we have a tiny little boat for the Gilmores and that is how they go fishing. And uh, yeah, they do okay. I think they are, they're lower peasants. So they are like they live in a dirt hut on the river in comparison to the alders who live in the woods in a log cabin. They're a little bit higher in the peasantry class, but they are peasants. Um, so this is who is engaged to Jedediah. This is Halia's sister, Tamara. And then this is Halia's father, Abraham. And his only living son, because Cormac died. Um, this is his only living son, Pascal. So, yes, we are visiting our family, and we're just going to say hey, make sure everybody is ready for the wedding that is coming up on Sunday. Um, we are super excited to go to the Temple of the Watcher, me I am the Watcher. Um, yeah, so they're going to go to a little chapel, Temple of the Watcher, and they are going to get married. And um, I think Abraham has been preparing by selling a lot of fish. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about marriage and just talk about how hard it was, you know, just accepting that we're going to be living somewhere else. And she's going to be responsible for all of Jacob's siblings as well, because she's going to be the only woman in the house, which is kind of why I already moved her over to get things started. Um, but in reality, I'm not going to do that in normal gameplay. But right now, um, she has already moved over. So maybe they're just talking about marriage and he's just like, how did you, and she's like, how did you and mom, you know, make it work? And, you know, what can I do to, you know, make sure I'm going to be a great mother? What if I die in childbirth? I know that's super important to them. So, yeah. We also, um, the Gilmores have like a little beehive back here. Um, let's see. Oh, we can collect their bee. We'll do it. And then I'm not going to collect their eggs, but I will feed their chickens because they're starving. And these were the ones she grew up with. And when her mother died, when Cormac was two, uh, well, no, yeah, so she died of a heart attack unrelated to birth. But Cormac died when she he was two. So yeah, so she's been pretty much taking care of Tamara and Pascal forever. And um, her mother definitely taught her some of the herbalism. So she did kind of, you know, play around and learn a bit of that. But maybe we'll go fishing 
with our family. They have a jokester dynamic. That would be sweet. But yeah, I think she's going to go fishing with her family like one more time outside their little hut and, you know, just talk about life. All right, so Tamara did not want to go fishing with them. I think she just has house chores to do. It looks like that she's cooking something. So, um, yeah, we have Pascal here and Abraham. So I think Halia is really just enjoying spending time with her family and just, like, reminiscing being a kid before she, you know, has kids of her own. You know, that's kind of where she is in life now. So just taking some photos but yeah little pascal um he will be aging up in the year 1301 i believe and we're gonna give him a pep talk saying you know we we know you got this bud you're gonna do great i actually do want to add an event for i need to do my calendar i'm gonna do that before the next episode but yeah i'm going to add an event for sunday at a holiday and an event so we're gonna call this this is year 1300 and we are super excited it's the new year um, I don't know if I want to make, maybe they can make, a, no, we don't really care. Um, wish we could have like go to the temple. That would be great, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so we have that and we're also going to do, I don't know if I should do the wedding event. Okay. So we know we can't do a wedding event because we're poor, but should we add an event? Is there a free one other than the Royal on it? Um, audience? No. Okay, so we will just plan a get-together um, and just do it that way in a group probably. So, yeah, we're going to stop. Oh, my goodness. The black rooster is yelling at her. Oh, no, she's hungry. We're going to have to feed her soon. But, yeah, so I think that's kind of, you know, where we are today. And I'm going to check it back in with us um, once the day progresses because we really want to get into the year 1300. I will say that this episode is going to be longer than the rest of them because I did have to do that long intro and kind of just like explain what we are doing. I just, I already missed this little hut. I played in it for like a sim week and just kind of built their story. Oh no, the tax man's here. Can we pay him? Um, I haven't been able to get this to work, but that's okay. At the end of the day, I could just take it away, but I'm not going to worry about it because we're not even in our main household. Um, yeah, so I already miss playing in this little bitty lot. I don't really love big lots, and I know that's a rule in the game is like you get in the biggest lot because you're not going to move um, anytime soon, and you're going to want to build it up. But I really was thinking about maybe changing the rules where we do start in a smaller one and uh, build up to a bigger one, but it has to be in the same world. But I don't really know. I know that they do want us to, that's kind of the morbid gamer rule that we start on the biggest lot. But I just, I love tiny lots. I prefer tiny builds. And I was playing around with landscaping in the tool mod because it was my first time using the tool mod. And I just have like a lot of regrets. Oh my gosh, something is happening. Do they just make out? Um, I need to get into this house. Oh no. Okay. This is probably the front door. Okay. We need to get into our family house um, ASAP. But yeah, so I don't know. I definitely am going to have to revamp our property, but I have like little things I did with the tool mod that I'm super proud of. So I'm like, oh, I don't want to destroy everything. So hopefully I can just um, get that edited. But yeah, what is going Oh, he's just playing the violin. I thought he was making out with her sister and I was like, what is happening? He needs to go away. We need to force him to leave because these guys are broken in the mod. And, um, that is super annoying. Maybe we could just pickpocket him. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. I mean, if we get arrested, we get arrested. Yeah. She's probably like, what do you mean you thought I was kissing him? Like, these doors are broken. You can't see anything. He was playing the violin. Which is obviously not historically, historically accurate for 1300s. And, um, oh, she did. She was able to pickpocket him. How much does she get? I'll have to see in the editing because I totally missed it. Um, yeah, she successfully pickpocketed him. But, let's see. She got stung by bees. But yeah, um, so this is kind of where Halia grew up. This is her family's home. And yeah, I think she's just enjoying spending time with her family before, you know, she has to get married. Can she clean him? Sweep that up. Yeah, so yeah, we'll check back in. I'm really, oh, I love her so much. I'm so excited to start our family and our generation. I'm actually going to close this so we don't see the bloom effect from my, um, presets that I have but yeah so she's just sweeping up taking care of her dad before she um ends up getting married and taking care of another family even though I do have her living with them actually I'm gonna have them taking care of themselves because that's exactly what they should have been doing um 
but yeah, just really exciting. I oh, this is um, custom animals, and I'm genuinely obsessed with it. Sorry, but I'm genuinely obsessed with the custom animals. I don't know what she's thinking about. Um, but this duck loves her. They're very, very close. Um, she grew up just playing with the duck, and she just loved it so much. So I think we can we. Oh man, we haven't. We have to craft treats. So um, I wish we could just buy them. But oh man, the chicken's here now. What? We'll give you some love too. But yeah, so. Halia, um, tomorrow we'll also be getting married. We're going to do a double wedding at the chapel because they're like nine months apart. Um, I'm just going to act like they got married. I'm um, not married. Um, they were born so close together because I like the idea of um, the double wedding. I feel like peasants would do that. Be like, hey, I have two sons and I have two daughters that are the same age. You know, let them get married. Um, so I, that's what I'm going to do. I just feel like that was totally a thing um, that. Oh, we have Trader Jacques is here, and we're not going to go near Trader Jacques because every time she gets a random romance bar, and I can't stand it. So I'm sick of deleting it because we are not romancing Trader Jacques. Oh, and I think her sister is. Oh, they're just sharing their thoughts. I love that. And I think the girls are just going to come over here and celebrate, you know, being young and uh, single one more time. I think. Where did she go? Well, maybe she's not coming. Oh. Yeah, so Halia is just, you know, hanging out and just spending time with her sister one more time and living that single girl life before she gets married. Oh, this is so silly. I really like this dance floor CC that I found. It's like dancing in the woods I was thinking like that's just something totally that they would do back then especially Halia because she grew up here so um yeah just having some fun so I thought it might be fun real fast to show you guys the royal family or maybe another household that I have this is the Windenburg um medieval override it helps override things but we have castle avalon with our monarchy over here we have the lord and lady gothic um this is a medieval goth family um based on the goth family but i have um isabella and um mortimer of course um and then their son from the game so it is not like an exact copy of the goth family but i imagine that they are their um, ancestors and they live in a castle that is older than the main castle um there is the abbey and we don't have anyone in it yet but we have an abbey we have a wizard tower we have a park and a campground we have over here in the dock area yeah, so this is shiny central commerce enterprise. Okay, so this is a fortress for, you know, the kingdom. This is the village. Uh, well, one of the villages. This is the main village. You will find, like, more nobles and stuff and traders at this village. Um, we have Duke of Hastings lodging here, but he is not here currently in the country. Um, we have a pub and a church next to each other. And then we have another manor for a lord, lady, baron, or a marquis. So we have a gothic church over here. This one is more for... Oh, so these two are more for the nobles. This one is older. Um, this one is... Well, no, so this one is older. It is smaller, and then this one was built by the monarchy. So this is the original, and then this is one built by the monarchy. And um, so they, you know, more nobles will frequent these two. Um, but this one's really not in use so much as this one. Um, and the abbey is just the sanctuary where we feed the poor, and you can go um, and, you know, commerce can happen. It's just more so for um, getting together. Um, this is our market. The Baron lives here and he owns all this land, um, except for the Von Hughes estate who owns, um, some as well. So this Baron granted, um, Lord, it's not Ster Sterling, it's Alder, uh, not Lord Alder, the Alder family. He granted them this land so this is the baron and his wife there is a tavern here again more for the middle class and the gentry class than it is for peasants um this is just a home i haven't placed anything on the old ruins yet uh, this is the tavern that more peasants will visit this is a tavern and a bnb &B, um, and this is the family that runs it 
Um, there is another windmill over here. This one is kind of like the peasants use it as a hangout. Um, this is the peasant watcher chapel. This one is where peasants get married. This one is kind of where noble people will get married. And then this is just the, like I said, the historic, uh, chapel, um, well church, but yeah, so that's kind of what my world looks like. We have the herbalists out here who, um, will eventually, uh, take over where her mother. Yeah. So she's, she's right here. So yeah, where her mother used to be like, there is a need for a herbalist. So there's a herbalist out here and we just haven't placed them yet. This is a, you know, just another little house for higher peasant classes. Um, this is the archery grounds where the, everybody in the kingdom comes and celebrates, you know, their skills. Um, the Vaughn Haunt estate, we haven't really visited that, but I do plan on placing a family there. This is the brewer house. He is the priest of the Watcher Temple over here. Uh, for the peasants, as well as he is married to a spellcaster, but he does not know it yet. But she is the village spellcaster, super good at everything, super quirky. Um, as well as there is magic in the goth family as well. So those are the only um, spellcasters we have. I didn't want to overly saturate the world. Um, and then this is our older household who got to run this amazing farm and really just take care of the peasant class with their produce. So we're going to go in and I think we're going to check in on the castle and the royals. And look at this view. It's so gorgeous. Um, honestly, like, I really love the overrides. Um, but yeah, that is super awesome. I wish we could put stuff on that island. Um, yeah, here is our main castle. Um, yeah, this is the castle of Avalon is what I'm calling it. And I think around back you can see the wizard tower and this is where the gothic family lives so this is their little um no i'm sorry this is the abbey so this is the abbey and a lot of like uh people who come into the country will stay here peasants and middle class and traders who are favored by the royals obviously if you're like a, a royal family visiting you would stay at the main castle or you would stay with i love this so much um you would stay with the gothic family um not sure what this is. Oh, that's our camp. Oh yeah. So I guess the Gothic family is on another little island. Are they over? Oh yeah, they're over here on the island. I don't know how far I can go. Oh, I wish I could go over there. They are behind this. So um I'm trying to back up. Back up. Yeah, okay. So the Gothic family lives and this area over here behind this castle ruin. So my lore is that the Gothic family used to be the rulers of this kingdom before the Lionheart family took over and built this castle. But the Gothic family aren't too upset about it. They're like cousins of cousins of people who were royal. Um, they're not the family who was in charge. And, you know, they all lost their kingdom for a reason. There is no bad blood. That was just hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But they are technically older, which is why I named them the Gothic family. Um, yeah, so we have King Richard Lionheart. We have Queen Mary Lionheart. This is Princess Eleanor Lionheart. Prince James, who looks like he is in the wrong outfit. Prince James Lionheart, Carson Lionheart, and I didn't name these. I did not name these two who were born, so we're probably going to change that. Honestly, while we are here, I'm going to go ahead and just age up the babies. So um, I'm not going to roll to see if they live or not, um, just because this is the royal family. Actually, you know what? Let's do it. We're going to roll just for them, just so I can show you guys how we're going to do this. So I'm going to have this over here underneath me. And uh, let's just pause and check our, well, first we want to change them, change their diaper. I forgot how to do that. Ever since they changed everything, I'm like, gosh, it's more clicks. I'm just like, you're making the game not fun with all the like clicking. It's kind of annoying. Um, yeah. So let's look at the reminder for aging up. It's over here. It's not the year 1300, but I'm just going to show you what it's going to look like. Um, so for babies to age up into the infant, we don't want to get a 12, 16 or 18. So we're going to go to our D20 roller. Going to give it a good refresh. And this is baby Carson. We're going to get 12, 16, 18. I think we don't want baby Carson survives. And then the sibling, uh, which it doesn't matter. I'm going to rename them anyways. So the second born, do they survive? 
Oh no, okay, so they do pass away. Ugh. So we're going to already lose um, Stetson. That's fine, we can keep that name. Um, Stetson is going to pass away, unfortunately. Um, I do not have the how did they die spinning wheel yet, which I will get eventually. Um, so that way we can roll for storytelling purposes. But what I'm gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna right click because I have the UI mod, it should work. Um, do I have to shift? Hang on a second. So I think, um, okay, so you're gonna shift click and then you hit this and they take it away. It doesn't technically pass away. Um, they take it away like in the game when you lose your children um, through social services. So that's how it works. And it says that he is hungry, that he was you know, too long without food and uh, they took him away. So obviously that did not happen to our royal family. There would be no scenario where their kid did not um, eat and was not able to prosper. So we're going to say that he passed away from SIDS, which was very common. Um, yes, yeah, so they should be getting a moodlet about losing him. It may take a minute or so for the game to register if that happened, um, but if not, I can add it. And then we're going to age up once I figure out how to do it, um, this child, and we're going to rename them. Okay, so the princess got the moodlet that her sibling is gone, but the king and queen have no idea. So maybe they're just like not observant parents that he passed away. Um, they do have two sons, which is good, but um, we may try for one more just to make sure their line is secure. So I feel like my game is glitched, but there is no, oh, she's crying. The princess is crying about her brother being taken away. She must really love them. I mean, they did share a room with her, but I have no way of aging up this child, which is bizarre. I feel like a doofus. It was right here under baby care the whole time. Okay. Well, we're going to get that taken care of and age up the stinky baby and we're going to rename him. So he aged up into an intense baby. Oh my goodness. So let me move my face so you guys can see this. Um, we have the royalty mod. I guess it doesn't say, okay, I thought it was going to, I thought it was a notification. Oh, he did smile for the first time for his dad. So we're going to go in and change his name, but I do want to see if um, he ages up from an infant to a toddler, which I might not pay attention to that, but what it would say is, from baby or infant to toddler, we would have to roll a um, four or eight for them to pass away. Okay, so he would survive anyways. So I think we're going to name him Michael or something along those lines because that would have been a really popular name. And then I will go into cast and change. So I actually decided to name him with this random name. Let me move this. This random name that we got was August Augustine and I really liked it. So his name is Augustine. This is what the little prince looks like. Um, I do not have any CC for eyelashes, but I do think I want to grab some for toddlers or infants and stuff. But yeah, so Augustine is second in line for the throne. And then uh, behind him is his sister, Eleanor. Um, this is James, the heir to our throne. He will also, oh no, we lost, we're we losing eyes. That's not fun. Um, yeah, so this is James. He is the heir to the throne. And we have Eleanor, his sister, who is betrothed to the son of um, the Gothic family, the Lord Gothic. I believe they are Marquis, but I'm not sure. Um, so we're just going to call him Lord Gothic. But she is engaged to, um, betrothed to his son. Um, and this is the Queen Mary. She's literally elegant, super nice. Um, she is also a royal from another country and not um, from the noble households here. And this is our King Richard Lionheart. Um, they're good king and queen. I didn't want to start with anything hectic. Um, but yeah, so they're really nice. So that's where we are with them. I do feel like this episode is getting kind of long because I had to do my intro. So we're at 40 minutes recording. So I think what I'm going to do is do our first episode in part one and part two. I know that seems really silly, but we haven't even made it to the year 1300 yet. And I really just wanted to introduce you guys to the gameplay, the challenge, reintroduce you guys back to my channel and um, yeah, so I, oh, I love the castle at night. Super awesome. But I think that we are going to um, call it here. And um, I'm going to do a part two where we actually are in year 1300. So, oh no, who's this? She doesn't belong. So let's ignore her. But yeah, so 
I am super excited to revive my channel. I hope you guys are going to enjoy the series. I know I did a lot of talking and like tiny bit of playing, but I just really needed to kind of lay the groundwork, tell you about like the save file I'm building and um, just give you a little bit of the character background. So when we're going into playing, you will know a teeny bit. Um, but we will do more roles and, uh, we will be playing more and you'll have more storytelling in future episodes. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm really excited to grow this channel and play this challenge and share it with you guys. Hazy Simmer out.